What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back to another Epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys to look ahead to the pay per view marquee throwdown showdown of the weekend. We're talking a 5 and 0 Cloud Nine matching up against a 5 and 0 Team Liquid. The only thing standing in the way of these squads of having a perfect split is this head to head. That we're blessed with the lcs so far it's felt like we've had the burner on on low heat there's been some heat as we've gone to best of threes this split but it's been a very low heat we've been making scrambled eggs the proper way we're keeping that heat low we're stirring it everything right now it's time to make the bacon turn up that heat on the burner get me some team liquid get me some cloud nine this is exactly where the schedule picks up for the LCS. Let's dive into this big time matchup. Now, last time we really hyped up a matchup was the Dig Fly Quest one, which ended up being a, a bit of a dud on the road as it ended up being a stomp for Fly Quest. But honestly, even if either way this series is a 2 0 stomp, that's enough to whichever team does that, you're going, oh, they're at a different level. I was blinded by the hopium for Dignitas in that situation, trying to we pump all it up. How, how could you be faulted for that type of situation? This is very different with Team Liquid and Cloud9, extremely proven teams at this type of level of the LCS. You're talking about Team Liquid, the success that they had in spring sp split, the trip to MSI, the growth, the progress that we saw with key members in APA and Yon, how that is translated back to the LCS at this point for Summer Split, the EWC, all those things thrown in there. Team Liquid is in the good books. Now you go to Cloud9, the team that is making redemption for the struggles, the slump of the Spring Split. Everything cleaned up to a degree. Not all the way, I will say, about this Cloud9 team, but certainly tightening of the screws a lot more so than you would have seen last split in the situation. Fudge in the top side. Now we've got Thanatos. You got Reaper behind the scenes. Vulcan is playing very well with Berserker. This is certainly a Cloud9 team that is surging. And this type of matchup at the very top is exactly what we want for the LCS. Obviously, both teams have been incredibly dominant so far. Basically, 1 2 in all the major uh, statistical categories in the LCS. But Cloud9 has been the even better laning team, early game team. So. That combined with how much Cloud9 and other LCS people were praising earlier in the split, Team Liquid's ability to do the lane swap, it seems like an easy strategy for TL in this series to pivot back to that and avoid some of the laning prowess that we've seen out of C9. And it's still relatively possible to pull that off in the meta and to make it doesn't happen easy. as often right now but right but it still is something that is 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 capable and one of those options and strategies that you've got to keep in your back pocket i think one of the things that's going to be absolutely interesting in this series is this evolution of the ad mid that we have seen across the globe and and where we have seen that taken to and knowing a player like jojo Pyat and the skills that he has and the type of line that he toes sometimes Entering that type of equation with these ADC mids is either a recipe for a major snowball for Cloud9 or disaster in the mid lane for Cloud9. That's the way this series is going to go. I expect more so that AD mid from Jojo Pion than I would say APA in the mid lane for Team Liquid and what we're going to get in this series. And then you can turn your attention, of course, to that top side. And this is a big time matchup for me that I'm super excited to see in this one because, of course, you have the veteran of impact grandpa impact in the top side holding down this for north america and then you throw in thanatos the hot young rookie coming in from the lck challenger scene and how is he gonna stack up against the world champion the import himself mr impact in the top side coming through for team liquid i can't wait to see how this one throws down is it old school or is it new school and thanatos has been destroying everybody in lane especially throughout this entire split but nobody not even the shy peak the shy destroys impact in lane so yeah that's the ultimate test for him and we've been seeing impact play 
more of the carries, or not necessarily carries, but just he's played nine different champions, and Rumble is the most played at the top of that. So yeah, that's a compelling matchup. And then, especially in the jungle for this series, less so directly that head-to-head, -head, but more the champs that are going to be played. Because we know Umpty loves the Sejuani, the Maokai, he's the beefy boy that can kind of engage and get things started, and... Blabber couldn't be more different in this AP jungler meta, so whether they're taking away the Sejuani or Maokai, it does feel like Blabber has more options in this meta. I don't expect that we're gonna see Team Liquid all of a sudden go, all right, dial up the Nidalee, General Lumpy, let's get you going on this type of one. I, I certainly don't think that's the angle that we're gonna see from Team Liquid. But as you say, the door is open for Cloud9 in that regard and what they can take from it. I think this has certainly been a cleaner performance, this split from Blabber compared to last split and where things were going, the state of the lanes that he was able to go to in that situation as well has improved for him. So you can see that bounce back. That type of matchup is certainly going to be one of those ones where I don't expect to see them necessarily head to head all that often. But certainly the champion picks, the pace they're going to try to set through the jungle, that is going to be where we're seeing a difference between the two of these two options. So the question is, who stand perfect? And if they stay perfect, are they going the full 7-0 first ever perfect split in the LCS? I am going with Team Liquid at this point i'm rolling with the proven product of the lcs at this is so what we have seen and i am still waiting i am still maybe bitter about cloud nine and spring split and i need to be proven wrong i need to see the revenge tour to its fullest so you got to prove it against team liquid and then you're gonna have to prove it against FlyQuest if you are cloud nine as we said this is where the bacon is going on we got the burner on the full heat for the rest of this lcs split Got to get it done in that situation. I'm still rolling with Team Liquid. I could easily see uh, the dreams being broken. Cloud9 wins this series, <laughs> then loses to FlyQuest, and then we got three teams sitting at 6-1 and one or something to close out uh, the split. But either way, you know this is perfect trash talk material that they're forcing number one with APA and JoJo. But whoever wins this series is absolutely going to be yapping all the way to what hopefully ends up being a playoff rematch. And I think people shouldn't forget that, you know, yes, uh, it's mostly going to be about APA and sure, maybe some memes thrown in there from JoJo Pyun. Can't forget about Vulcan down in the bottom lane. He certainly is a Twitter a chatter king himself. Him. Yeah. He is a chatter himself, and he certainly has got his boy JoJo's back in any of these type of situations. So, yes, I expect this one to have a, a little bit of extra heat, a little bit of extra mojo to this one between Team Liquid and Cloud9. Certainly both squads no question about it want to prove that they are the elite they are the top option front runner for the lcs region this is your first crack at it right here in summer well if jojo and apa are looking for some type of counter pick to some of these ad mids look a little further than your boy showmaker in the lck pulling out the trindamir mid in game three against kwang dong and I don't think I actually saw him use his ult in this game. And honestly, it definitely wasn't the Trindamir that had the big impact in this game. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Let me be the first, or maybe the last at this point, to sound the alarm when you're losing to a Trindamir that is not having to use the ultimate. That's a go next. That is a massive go next for me immediately. Not necessarily a luxury provided in the LCK professional games because, yes, D plus Kia steamroll through, even if it is a full game, full series set, it was a very much a stomp from D plus Kia. And yeah, the third game and the first game, really, both all about aiming. First the Ezreal, then the Kaisa. He picks up double player of the game, double digit kills, or maybe only nine, but basically double digit kills in both of these games as his horrid pace over the last couple of weeks continues i'm scared i'm scared because at any point when aiming gets this hot there's a cliff there is a drop off there's some type of thing happening and i hate Not it. In I don't playoffs to, no i don't i don't be, mean to be mr doom and gloom i'm just going through history and at some point it's gonna hit for aiming he's gonna find you know either he gets a little bit too greedy gets a little bit too much over that edge something's gonna happen and it's not going to be so pretty for D-plus Kia. But you know what? I'd love to be wrong about this one. I've been wrong before, of course. like to see it on this one for D-plus Kia because the way things are going, how hot he has been, 
in the bottom lane how much of a contribution he has had for this D plus Kia team. How good things look with Showmaker in the mid lane when you have those other contributions. You have that other warmth around the map for D plus Kia. It enables him to do so much more to get more out of his own individual matchup as well. That is the secret for me. This D plus Kia team, they keep this type of form. They're going to be competitive no matter who the opposition is going to be when we get to these later parts of the LCK summer. And that's a much more exciting LCK when D-plus is at that level and is competing at that uh, higher rate. So excited to see them continue to grow throughout the end of summer. Hopefully, Aiming doesn't fall off the cliff until at least a deeper-ish playoff run uh, out of the D-plus boys. Checking in, playing a little bit of who am I today, Mark? We got three. I got, I got variety. We got a player, we got a champion, and we got a team to get through. We're going to start with the player and this is you know from summer uh, i'll give you hints as you need maybe as we go on but this player this individual they had the highest cs differential at 15 among all players in the split they also had the lowest kda among all players and the lowest kill participation among all players those are some jarring stats man I'm, I'm, i was like so ready you, you say the first one and i'm immediately going okay well you know well yeah there's been a couple good guys but there's nobody whose name jumps out right away on that stat more than chovy and then you lay up the next two <laughs> and you're like it, there's no way it's Chovy. who the yeah. heck could this be i'm telling you I, i'll i'll get the other ones i'm completely lost on this one i think everyone this is wild to think that there's somebody out there with this combination of stats right now. I'll narrow it down to it's from the LEC. It's from the LEC okay. uh, summer oh. playoffs. You see some? Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this, is this? Is, I'm, I'm feeling this has got to be something like an SK angle here, BDS angle at this point, and that is scary to think about. I'm... <laughs> I'm unfortunately going to throw my boy Niski under with this one. I'm, I'm taking the guess on it. You know, that's probably a good guess because he didn't have a great playoff run. This guy barely qualified, didn't play many games. This was Team Heretic's oh. wonder. Oh. 17 oh. CSD, but he had a .9 KDA and a 42% kill participation. Yikes! I can see it. I can see it now when you lay it out a bit like Win that. Win lane, lose game, baby. That is pretty wild. I think that is one of those ones where there's got to be a deeper dive. That is an X-Files type of mystery at that point because <laughs> in able to have that individual success and by all means, a double check mark of success, not just getting it done, really getting it done as far as that differential in lane to not have any type of traction, any type of result that matters in these team fights when you're looking at these other two statistics. Yep, uh, I, I would I would buy a Team Heretics member, any of them, and wonder if it fits the bill. This, like I said, classic win lane, lose the game. That's what Wonder was feeling uh, in Team Heretics. Next one, we're going to a champion. Haven't done one of these before. This champion has the highest presence of all. This is major regions in summer. The highest presence, so that's either picked or banned, at 94%. And also has the highest gold differential at 15 for a champion at plus 643. Who am I? Oh, man. It's got to be one of these front runners that we have seen so much in the meta. It has to, and it's got to be one that is sneaking through in order it's to sneaky. get some. It's sneaky. Uh, getting some of these ones through. Uh, oh. The brain wants to jump to Corky because we see so much of Corky. And Corky is one of these champions that can do it. But Corky feels like just such a simple answer in that regard. It's got to be somewhere else. It's got to be cooking. Throwing in a bit of the pick and ban conversation. That what we've been seeing. It's mm. a lot more bans than picks. I'll say that. I was going to say, that that was the other thing I was worried about, is that's the angle that we're heading towards. And my problem is, in my back of my mind, I'm not remembering picking bands. I'm remembering who I'm seeing Who's out there on yeah. Summoner Rift. That's the problem. Uh, I'll tell you, it's in the top lane. It's not Cassante. 
it is rumble on the top side that's a lot of bands people 457 times rumble has been banned which is a hundred more than anyone else so far in some just like wonder i'll buy this one because absolutely there has been a lack of rumble i think that we have seen around the world unfortunately we have got to see him a couple times and all of those times it has been a, a full-on burning of the rest of the enemy squad when you have the rumble able to accelerate like that in lane out of lane i see it i see the numbers stacking up that's pretty impressive and now that you bring it to mention yeah we haven't seen it necessarily as often given as strong as it has been that's got to be the pick and ban and that's a classic uh rumble Korea hits a little different than Rumble ah. NA a lot of the time. It's kind of the Jace equation that we've been seeing uh, over the past couple of years. Last one, we're going team. And these stats are, again, from all the major regions in summer. This squad has the worst gold differential at 15. I'm talking negative 1,700. They have the second most deaths per game at over 17. And the second fastest game time, second only to one Gen G. But I'll tell you what, it's the fastest, not because they're dominating, as you can tell by the stats. Oh, man, it's it's a tough one because there's some angle in there that tells me, is this G2? Is this slumping G2? Is it possible? And you go, okay, it can't be that bad. It cannot possibly be at that type of level because if we're talking about a gold differential that bad that's probably what that's, it was against Fnatic. that is a wildly serious well that's the problem is that we have seen some of these trends of g2 towards that type of territory but it has got to be someone hanging out at the bottom my normal answer is a shopify rebellion but shopify rebellion doesn't quite fit i think all of those statistics so i can't be rolling with your boys on shopify I feel like this has to be an LPL team. This has got to be an LPL team squeaking on through and dropping some of these ones in. Uh, I can tell you it's not in the LPL. It is uh, it is an LCS squad. Oh, no. Really? Okay, it's well the then, you know what? I can't take my classic answer, Shopify Rebellion. Go with the other one, and we will take a Dignitas, unfortunately, on this one. It could have been Immortals, but we're rolling on Dignitas. It's none of those three teams, Mark. What? This is a no. hundred thieves sitting oh. here. <laughs> That's wild, man. Oh. Yikes. I love getting these ones wrong because it's such a wild thing to think that that is one of those squads where you're going, they haven't been that bad, but they certainly haven't been hot. They certainly haven't been great. So you can buy that that's a possibility then you go well okay are there games that bloody oh yeah their games are pretty bloody for geno sniper but not, outside. not for yes. them oh. they're averaging 10.7 kills a game 17.1 deaths per game that is uh, yucky yeah we're running into that gray screen uh, more than a few times on that one that's crazy to think that it's 100 these sneaking up there that you can go through all these other regions thinking about the struggles of, of you know g2 through there thinking about all the wild top and bottoms that you go through in the lpl and then you say it's lcs and it's not a shopify it's not a dignitas it's not an immortals but we all have bottom feeding working around in the waters <laughs> there's a lot to choose from in the lcs how is 100 these in this in this spot that is crazy well it makes you even feel more for sniper in this interview they're benching meech maybe there's really not good stuff going on behind the scenes for 100 thieves and the numbers and the record over the last couple of weeks absolutely showcasing that but these were tough ones today so i'll give mark a pass on and not being able to get them <laughs> uh but we'll obviously be back again to do another one of these but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip